Welcome back, everyone, to Dead Talk Live. I am your host, Viz, and today we are joined by Samantha Sloyan and Ward Roberts, who are the stars of a brand new movie called Invaders from Proxima B, which is now streaming exclusively on Fandango at Home, formerly known as Voodoo. Samantha Ward, (laughs) that sounded like one full name, Samantha and Ward, (laughs) thank you for joining us today. Congratulations on the new film. I've seen it. This is a fun, fun movie that the audiences are going to enjoy. How are the both of you doing today? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for having it. It is my pleasure. So, Ward, I want to start off with you. Um... You're not only the co-star of Invaders from Proxima B, you also wrote and directed this film. Tell us about some of the inspirations that made you write this screenplay. Well, I certainly grew up in the 80s with with E.T. and ALF and all of that just kind of in the DNA, even before I knew filmmaking was a thing. Those are just movies that I loved. Uh, But then more recently, when I had my own children, I bought a couple puppets off of Etsy with the idea of making YouTube videos with my kids or really just playing with my kids and maybe we do a YouTube channel. And I kind of put them away and pulled them out a couple years later when the the kids were a little bit older and we just moved into our house here in Glendale and it all just it just kind of hit like an epiphany that we've got we've got children, a house, a bunch of friends who are amazing actors and willing to do kind of whatever fun project we want to throw together. And so I was like, well, if we could really up the ante on this Etsy puppet and make it something special, that's everything we need to make a movie. iPhones had gotten to the point where you could make a movie on an iPhone. So away we went. And I got to tell you, watching this movie, when I saw your alien, the first thing that popped into my mind was ALF. It was ALF, and I loved watching ALF in the 80s. I grew up on ALF, so uh, I'm so glad you said that. Now, Samantha, you play Jane Jenkins. Um, You and Ward play a married couple. Jane is very different from the other characters that a lot of people know you from in your career. Oh, yes. What attracted (laughs) you to Jane? What attracted you to the script? Well, mainly the first thing that attracted me to the script is that it was you know, Ward has had asked me to come play with everybody. And I've known uh, a lot of the people involved for a long time. And just being able to do to work on something where the um, the morale is high, the energy is high, everybody wants to be there, and everybody's having a good time and uh, making something that I think is just like a positive, happy, like fun movie, Mm -hmm. which is so nice to be a part of because you know things don't always break that way so (laughs) i really i think that was again having known ward if ward asked you to do something in my opinion you should (laughs) (laughs) that's some good advice now ward obviously samantha just said that you guys known each other before this film did you write the character of jane with samantha in mind and was she eagerly ready to come on board when you approached her Yes, I absolutely wrote it for (laughs) Sam. When you know Sam, you love Sam, and you uh, admire her work greatly, as everybody who's ever watched her act does. And Sam's not just like a big deal on TV and film. Like here in L.A., she's got a great reputation as a theater actor, too. Like Sam is an actor with a capital A. So you just feel so lucky that she's in your orbit at all but still kind of self-conscious about being like, "Mm, would you want to do this? Because, you know, we don't have a lot of resources here, but the resources we did have was each other, the love for each other and belief in each other. And so knowing it wasn't just me asking Sam to do my thing, but that it was this group, this family of filmmakers who have done uh, several together at this point, um, you know, I, I wrote it for Sam. I wrote each of those roles for each of those actors because not only are they great actors, they're great friends. That's awesome. Now, Samantha, this is your first lead role in a comedy, I believe. Yeah. Did that make you nervous oh. at all? Absolutely. I mean, like, uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that people who, uh, you know, great comedic actors are just, to me, astounding. They're... Um, if somebody can make you laugh to me, that's 
such a high level of artistry and connection and um, recognition in somebody. And I, I, yeah, I was terrified. I was scared, but I was, and I was surrounded by actors who I think are hilarious. And so um, I was just trying to keep up and trying to, um, yeah, you know, play for real when I could to try and bring out the comedy in something. Well, and you did a fan leaning as hard as I could on everybody around me. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. Uh, not to uh, spoil anything, you. but you guys all get to chance uh, to play each other's characters yes. without revealing too much. Did Ward allow you guys to just let loose and have fun when you were playing him and when he was playing you and vice versa? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was, you know, j a just go for it mentality. It really with every all of this. It, um, and there's a real freedom of working with people you you know and you love because you do feel that safety to be like, well, I'm going to try this. I hope it works and I hope somebody stops me if it doesn't. <laughs> and um and that was, you know, that was kind of the feel for everything. So, yes, when it came to those moments, uh, you know, we just all kind of had at it. <laughs> now, Ward, uh, when you were presenting Chuck, your alien, to us as the puppet and, and whatnot, and as the movie progressed, um, was there a line with the comedy and the satire that you sort of wanted to keep it in the serious realm or did you just want to throw it all out there just put it all out on the table and let everybody have some fun with this well if i'm understanding it it correctly in terms of like i think and it's part of the reason like sam is so funny in this film in this role and i think everybody is is that we actually weren't like trying to be funny so much as we were like committed to the story and the reality of what is happening and and i think maybe in the context of the screenplay and each other and this animatronic fur puppet <laughs> like it, it colors everything you do but ultimately the stakes are very high for all of these characters and i don't think we ever really winked at the camera knowingly yeah. um and that it was the stakes were life or death potentially the end of the known world yeah. and or universe so with that i think the 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 comedy of survival was really the humor we were going for that makes perfect sense now let's talk a little bit about the father-son characters of of willie and marvin um I, in them, I saw a little bit of a satire spoof of Men in Black, you know, the intergalactic <laughs> police, the protectors of the planet. Uh, is that what you were going for with them? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that, because originally I thought of Jay, who plays a, one of the Draconians, and Jeremiah, who plays the Exterminator, as basically Men in Black characters. And then I was thinking about, you know, all my favorite people and where I could fit them, and then I was like, wait a second, how come nobody has made Mike Nelson and Richard Reilly father and son yet? They'd been in a movie together before Bullet County. And I was like, the mustaches, the the humor, like the it's perfect. So then I and I knew that that men in black archetype needed to be turned on its head. But I kind of forgot that's where it came from until you just asked that question. So yeah, that's exactly what I meant to do. <laughs> I got to ask you, the, the Hawaiian shirts they wear, whose idea was that? Was that your idea? I, yeah, yeah. I think I, you know, the whole idea that they're going to retire to Waikiki or whatever. Oh, right. <laughs> it, it, it was just the, the absolute opposite end of the spectrum of like a black suit. Now, Samantha, now that you've done this comedy role, and it sounds like you had a lot of fun with it, uh, as yeah. your career progresses and your star keeps rising, is comedy something that you're more interested and open to doing more of in your career? Oh, I would love to do more. And I've always been, I've always been uh, open to it. I just, I, it doesn't very frequently find its way to me. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> But I would love to. I just, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and Sam, more. <laughs> I, you know, I got to ask you, because you've been in all these blockbuster limited season shows. Was it fun yeah. just stepping out of that role, out of that seriousness and sort of the darker roles into this lighthearted, 
a funny movie where you can let your hair down and just be you and have fun? Honestly, I mean, I find it all thrilling and fun and I love the dark characters and those are thrilling and fun in their own way. One of the things about this movie that was really exciting to do that I was happy about is a movie that one is really, you know, my friend's kids can see it yes. and not be afraid of me. <laughs> and, um, and that, you know, I just think being part of something that has a real uh, positive vibe and a positive mm -hmm. message and uh this is something you don't always get to do and i i love it and when i see it i love it and so being a part of it uh for me was fantastic and i would i totally know, with agree Ward, i'd do it again a million times i totally agree and Ward, i loved how you not only gave us this film but in the end it really had a, a touching story to it that the people are gonna have to watch to find out now, I got to ask you this question, Ward. I've interviewed a lot of directors who have starred in the films they are directing. For you, uh, how difficult is it for you to direct, especially a scene that you are in? Uh, is there a method that you have? How do you go about handling that? Man, I was freaking out the whole time we were shooting this movie. Uh, you know, and I'm sure that was part of it. I really sh should have just realized that everybody helped get the script in shape. And then with this group of people, we couldn't go wrong, but I still was so freaked out every day that I was going to let down and disappoint and fail all these people who had put so much faith into the project. So while there was a great positive vibe amongst the cast and crew, I do kind of separate myself from that. <laughs> and hopefully I just sort of had my own brand of crazy off in the corner that wasn't infecting other people very often. But, um, you know, as far as that goes, I, I didn't really have that much time to specifically think about it. And again, trusting Sam and Travis and Mike and anybody else who was around to like give me ideas or say, hey, maybe try it this way or that way. Not only with myself, but also if I was playing Chuck in yeah. that given moment. So you do, you just kind of have to rely on the folks around you. And it does help having spent that much time with the script. Like, you know what it's about. Yeah. Like, you know what's going on in this scene and what just happened and what's going to happen next. So you kind of then, you know, on one hand, you can't overthink it because you've got to figure out what's coming for lunch in a half hour. <laughs> and what are you going to do about one of the three lights that's now broken? Yeah. Yeah. You got to worry about that stuff. Now, Sam, uh, before we go, uh, independent films run on a much tighter schedule. Money is a constriction mm -hmm. whatnot. How much time did you guys have to shoot this? Oh, Ward would know better about that. But uh, we were, I mean, we were working, we were working in a heat wave. We were working inside a hot house in Glendale. Um, and in retrospect, it was, you know, a great time had by all. But <laughs> in the moment, it was it was real hot. But what was what was our shoot schedule, Ward? What, how many days did we do? So for principal photography, I believe we had 20 days mm -hmm. that and sounds then about right. we, yeah. yeah then we did pickups and reshoots which totaled about five days so i think i think all in all we're at like 25 26 days well yeah felt that yeah. congratulations to you both i want to thank you both for coming on our show and talking about this film again everybody the movie is called invaders from proxima b and is now available for streaming exclusively on fandango at home for those of you unfamiliar with Fandango at home, it's what used to be called Voodoo. So check it out. It's there. It's streaming right now. Uh, I want to thank all our viewers for tuning in. On behalf of Samantha, Ward, and myself, please everybody stay safe. Stay walking. Bye, everybody.